Hey everyone, it's Tamara Thompson with Video Marketing for Business podcast, and I'm super blessed and grateful today because I have Jeff Spencer um, on my show, and a little bit about how we connected was uh, through a community, a mastermind that, that I was a part of, and as you guys know through previous podcasts, I think connection is one of the biggest things uh, to help you grow your business and building the right relationships with people that value the same morals that you do, and his story really stuck out, him and actually his daughter's story. So I'm sure he'll touch base a little bit on what that, that entails as well. But I mean, he's, he's, he's gone through a lot of cool things. Like he was an Olympic uh, cyclist and he's mentored and worked with high performance individuals like Tiger Woods um, and, you know, gosh, the CEO of Bulletproof. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different people that he's worked with and he really focuses on different pieces of really getting people to bust through different things in the sense of like mindset and coaching and high performance, but he can share a little bit more in depth of like what he really truly does for people. He's just a really, really good person. And I felt truly connected to him when I heard his story back at that mastermind. So Jeff, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Tamara. It's really a pleasure. Thank you. You know more about your story that, than I do. So I'd love for you to just kind of share, like, obviously you, you were an Olympic cyclist and you went into, you were believing high performance and things like that, but it's not always just about that. There's so much that people have to go through in training for themselves to get to these peaks, um, but the, not just in the athleticism, but also helps them through life and business. And I think that's what's really unique is that you help people in business, not just athletes as well through these experiences. Well, thank you. It's actually all in the business world right now, even though people think, well, you were an Olympic athlete, you helped a bunch of people win gold medals, which I did, but my work right now is principally helping uh, high achievers be able to peak perform anytime, any place, under any given set of circumstances. And my focus to make sure that they don't blow themselves up prematurely and to make sure that they can peek around the corner and see what's coming so they avoid the preventable problems and seize best opportunities and also capture their time and energy back to be able to create the legacy that they're capable of. And what I do know is that playing at the top is a learned behavior. It's deliberate, it's purposeful, it's not an accident. And that's how I found my way uh, into the world of um, some of the most prolific achievers of our time in a variety of different uh, disciplines. So that was a the, the journey from, from there to here, uh, as you said, I was an Olympian. I, why that helped me is that unless you performed at the top, you can't go out and read a bunch of books about it or interview successful people and be that person. You have to have it in your DNA. And there needs to be time in the game to really understand the nuances of that. And uh, the other things that I did academically and experientially really set me up to be a, a very kind of different type of advisors. There's lots of coaches out there that can help people in very specific areas, but they don't know about the rest of the person's life. It's kind of like, well, I can help you on this. Like when I work with you too, uh, Bono had his voice coach, but he could only help him with his voice. What about the rest of his life? And unless that was considered, then there's always a risk that whatever the coach did will not stick. And uh, I feel uh, also that, um, it's uh, important to what I also learned uh, through my uh, career in uh, helping others is that uh, there's a very deliberate process which you can go through. Like my first angel in my life was my cycling coach. And he said, Jeff, uh, one thing is to get to the Olympics, but uh, I need to teach you the skill of actually how do you win? And he taught me the skill of winning. It's actually a learned behavior. So those are many of the things that I found to be extraordinarily valuable to me and those people that came into my life that equipped me with the ability to not just be a coach and not just be a mentor. You know, a mentor's got a little bit more bandwidth than a coach, but they still don't know about the other half of the individual. And so for myself, because of my experience and my age, uh, I'm often referred to as the corner man, meaning that uh, Rocky had the older guy in his corner that in real time was watching Rocky's back and he knew what to do to be able to make sure that Rocky did the right thing to win the round to become the perennial champion of the world. And that's what I do. Generally people have got a lot of different advisors that are helping him with little bits and pieces, but they don't have anybody that's watching their back and their universe, knowing what to do, all things considered. And that's the role that I play for the people that I work with. Do you, so at this point, like, are there certain, like you, do you know, like right off the bat, like, was speaking to someone like 
kind of where they're at with their their business growth and model and how you can help them like it, I'm sure it comes quick to you with how you can actually help serve someone like no, knowing their story and where they're at in their business and understanding that they might have a coach over here but knowing that you can help them um, in different ways does it come natural to you at this point when you have just conversations with people like you know like this person is is someone you can help right away well there's no question about it and there's two parts of that there's the uh, being able to help them in a specific area generally it's with them the performer it's one thing to do opt-in strategies and conversion rates and things like that but at the end of the day it's about how they show up and how they make decisions which is really my sweet spot to gain control over their business to be able to be a credible leader to know what to do when to make the right moves that's what i i help them with not just the nuts and the bolts of what their business uh, is and so i'm fairly selective in what i do and a person can't just sign up with me they need to uh, fill out an application we need to have a connection call and during those uh, touch points i have a pretty good idea of where i can uh, help them and uh, if i believe that i can then we do a two-part process that I call the Clarity GPS, like goal uh, positioning survey. We need to know exactly where your goal is. We need to be able to name it. We need to make sure it's the right goal, not just any goal, but the right goal. We need to be very clear on a second thing is that we understand where your starting point is. You have a GPS, got to make sure that you're programming in the start location correctly. My opinion is that most people don't take enough time to really look at what their state of readiness is for what. And I take a lot of time, two hours, in fact, to be able to make sure I understand where they are in their entire universe. And then from that, then if I know that they've got the right goal, then I can help them uh, create the trajectory between where they are and where they want to get to. And so I always start with that uh, process first. First call, collect the data. Second call is deliver them exactly where they are, what that means, and what the path is from where they are to where they want to get to. And that's where the process begins. I think it's kind of a similar process when, when I work with my clients on the sense of like, you can almost implement this into the sense of like video strategy, like because you have to have a specific goal, right? When Like this obviously we're talking about video marketing here, like how can we implement uh, the structure and the way that you think about creating your video because people some people aren't even confident enough to, to turn the camera on or push record mm -hmm. right <laughs> you've got yeah. that step right or knowing like your goal and your trajectory your business or understanding like YouTube for an example like uh, people will be like oh well I think people are searching for this on YouTube but what are they really searching for mm -hmm. like finding out the the goals but also having the tools and the resources to understanding like what people are actually searching for on YouTube. So the fact that they can actually optimize and grow based on a target audience of the people that you want to follow you and work mm -hmm. with you as well. So I think there's similarities to what, uh, what I do in that kind of same structure, like setting up the goal, having the clear messaging and knowing what the outcome is that you want, but taking the action to record, you know, that video or putting yourself out there consistently you know, I was watching you for a while there. You were like doing consistent uh, Facebook live streams and you got your branded backdrop right here. You've got your mic set up, you've got your lighting and stuff. And you were just going at it, you know, with uh, Facebook lives. What was your experience like doing more Facebook lives when you were doing that consistently? How did you see um, connecting with your audience like more valuable through video, I guess I would ask. Uh, certainly video is the, the medium of the present and the future for sure. And I, I realized that the only way that I'm going to get really proficient at it is to do it. So yeah. I decided one Saturday afternoon, uh, starting tomorrow, I'm going to do a Facebook Live every day for a year. I just decided I was going to do that and that I would get better at it through the process of actually doing it. And that's exactly what I did. I didn't wait to feel like it. I just showed up and I just did it. And I, I knew that I needed to create a framework that I could speak from that would... Uh, introduce the topic and bring value to the listener and give them tangible uh, recommendations to be able to implement into their life uh, in uh, every kind of genre and every uh, conceivable um, circumstance that they might find themselves in a as a performer. And I found that I was actually really good at it and I actually really liked it, but I had to get beyond the embarrassment of doing it beyond the, I'm not, sure if I can actually do this. I mean, the, the usual questions that, that people ask in advance of doing something. And, and now I can just show up and just do them 
without any hesitation. I've made peace with the camera. It's actually become a really good friend. And that's the reason why I did it. And I'm really glad that I did. Well, I love, I love the fact that you're literally setting like a commitment for like the, the year, you know, like some people are like, oh, you know, because when we work with our clients, they, they set up agreements for the year too. Because we always say like YouTube is a long-term strategy, you know, it's a marathon, not a sprint, you know, because people mm-hmm. that see it. And that's where the consistency factor goes into a lot of the most successful people that, that I talked with is they have one thing in common, well, they have many things in common, but one thing is the consistency factor, being able to show up and be visible if that's the way that you market your business business at utilizing video in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you uh, recently, um, I know I've seen that you've been jumping into some clubhouse rooms too. It's a totally different format. We've got the audio platform with clubhouse. How have you been liking clubhouse um, as well for right. a, 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 a platform, I guess? I mean, it's the same thing. I, I've actually- Without I, the video. <laughs> uh, Justin Breen and uh, Nick Peterson and I, we host one every Friday at 7 a.m. And it's a very uh, serious, very deep, important conversation about what it takes to become a high achiever, not just the little stuff that everybody already knows, but it's really about the nuances of it. And I I really love that uh, level of conversation. Uh, I do it because uh, I know that I understand the world very well. I also hear different questions come in that I may not be familiar with. It gives me a chance to build my body of knowledge and experience simultaneously. It uh, allows me to be able to say more and fewer words and be thoughtful about what the question is and responding to it. I found that it's a a great uh, opportunity to uh, self-vet and to be able to upgrade uh, my ability to more accurately convey what it is that I want to say in in fewer, higher impact words. Yeah, no, I I love the the platform too. You know, as a female, I, I think to myself, well, I don't have to do my hair and makeup when I do the clubhouse rooms, right? <laughs> but, but that's not one thing. But you know, it's funny because my, my friend Randy Zuckerberg and I just launched a master class about teaching people how to get going with the clubhouse. And it's funny that you were talking about doing Facebook Live for a year. Randy created Facebook Live. It's like small world. Everybody's connected, yeah. right? And so, but we've been leveraging it in different ways too because I think the consistency factor of um, creating clubs in, in there as well. I don't know if you guys are, if you created a club that you go live in the club each Friday or is it just a, a room for an event every um, every week that's, you guys club? what it is we, we just do it once a week it works well for all of us that's great yeah we started leveraging different clubs and communities um, in different ways to help um, it, it as an audio platform obviously we talk about video marketing but I think mm-hmm. it's a, a new unique tool that's almost like a, a live podcast and conversational yeah, tool right. so. it really is I really like it what types of um, this, uh, what would you say to somebody that's, um, you know, what would be some tips that you would give for somebody that's probably in the same sense of, you know, they're, they're getting going with, maybe they're, maybe they're already a high performer, but they, maybe they're just like afraid of the camera or, um, that they don't feel video is their, their tool. Like, what would you say to somebody in that area? Like, do you ever recommend to your clients to use video? Um, is that something that you have it in or do a lot of the people you work with just kind of focus on that one thing and is video one of those things? Well, I'm in the high performance side of it uh, as then the individual, like you're the one that has to show up. You're the one that drives the bus. You're the one that inspires people to follow you. And to do that, you have to be a really good communicator and you have to have a vision. You have to be credible. You have to be believable. There's all sorts of things that you really need to be. And of course, um, in my kind of world for them is that we use a video to uh, do some dress rehearsals so that you can understand and see yourself as you really are. You may presume yourself to be some way, but if you don't show up and you're not really who you think you are in terms of your presentation, it's probably a good idea if you can improve what you do by actually watching yourself do it. But I'm not the the guy that you come to as the video course expert on how to get on stage. I can really show you how to show up and deliver something that has to go right the first time. That's what I'm really good at. And so we do use video to make sure that what we think it's going to be is what it really is because we've actually observed ourselves in the process of actually doing it just to make sure that there's no ambiguity 
or belief in something that could have been much better had we known in advance. And that's where the video comes into it, at least on my side of what I do for my clients. Can you share with, I know on your backdrop, it says the, the champion's blueprint. I know that you kind of went through that a little bit with the mastermind that, that I was at, um, kind of going through some different steps. Is, is there anything that you can share a little bit about your blueprint and what that's for and kind of how you walk through people like briefly on, on that? I know that you share that with clients and in conversations, but uh, I'd love to kind of share a little bit more about what that looks like. Cause I know that when you walked that through that with us, I was like, dang, I was like, okay. I was like, I get this now. Like, I'm like, okay, this is where I'm at. This is what I should be doing <laughs> and things like that. But I'd love for you to just kind of touch base on what that champion's blueprint is about. Well, there, there are two things. There is the champion's blueprint, which is like an umbrella. Mm -hmm. And one thing every champion has is that they have a toolkit that has all the tools necessary to succeed. And my champion's uh, toolkit uh, blueprint and it, I must say that's all I know because I grew up around that. You know, my coach was a three-time Olympian, five-time national champion. Uh, you know, my other mentors were uh, Emmy award-winning uh, photographers and had documentaries done about them. Therefore, everybody that I was around growing up was a prolific achiever at a very high level. So that was, it wasn't put into me. It awoke something within me that was that that I found through athletics and through my advisory to be equally good at, at that level. When we look at the tools that make up the champion's uh, blueprint, well, number one, I have the goal achievement roadmap, which is a process by which you consistently, predictably, and repeatedly achieve your most important goals. I think most people think that goal setting is goal achievement. It's not, there, there are two different things. Goal setting is important, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be able to get to the goal itself. That's really a doing process where first you need to prepare to be well prepared to then start pursuing the process to go from first step into the winner circle where the goal is achieved. Another one of my models is called the champion's perfect day. And the common unit of life is the day. And if you can control the day, you can control your life. But if you can't control the day, you can't control your life. And if you can't control your life, then you can't get stuff done. Stuff doesn't get done and you can't produce. Therefore, your legacy and your contribution, people's trust in you is going to be compromised by that. So I've created an entire program about structuring a day where you're going to be able to peak perform consistently to be able to have the highest volume of productivity possible. I've got that mastered. That's another tool. Another tool that I have is called the Life Lens Progression, where every decade there's going to be a way of thinking and being that you can't conceive of in advance that may take you by surprise. But if you know that that's coming, you're not taken by surprise by it. You look at it as something that was anticipated to be able to gather and maintain the momentum necessary to be able to consistently form at the level that you need to, to create the most significant number and magnitude of successes that will make up your legacy. I have a variety of other tools that fit under that umbrella that we select appropriately for, for the particular needs of the client that I'm working with. That's the champion's um, blueprint. I love that. No, I, I just love listening to you speak. <laughs> Everything that you do, I know you didn't dive into like more of like your story on a sense of like with your daughter and other things, but uh, for those that would wanna get in contact with with you because you and hear a little bit more about your story, follow your Facebook lives, jump in your clubhouse. Where would be the best ways to, to reach you? And my team will put stuff in the description too, but what would you say like your hot spot is to connect right now? Well, there's, there's two ways of doing this to get a greater insight into uh, some of the models that I use and some of the videos that you alluded to. That would be before you win.com www before you win.com. B-E-F-O-R-E-Y-O-U-W-I-N.com. That's where some of the models are housed, et cetera. That would be a great place to go for that. But if you're interested in having a deeper conversation about you and what you need to do to be the best possible you as the driver of your own bus, how is it and what do you need to do to get to the top of your game and then stay there to produce your best work and create the most memorable legacy, 
would be to go to www.drjeffspencer.com, D-R-J-E-F-F-S-P-E-N-C-E-R.com, and just check out the site, take a look at it. And if you feel like there's a reason why we might have a conversation, you can just fill out an application, send it to me, and I'll get back to you, and we can have that conversation. There's no obligation to doing that like whatsoever, but that would be the way to do it. I love that. Well, I appreciate you so much. We've come up to our, our 30 minutes on, on the hour and I appreciate you so much just for joining me today and just sharing some of those golden nuggets. And I highly recommend connecting with Jeff and just learning a little bit more about his backstory and some of the types of people he's worked with and things like that. And he's a very intelligent man. He's, he's experienced things and that's why he's able to be able to, to show people how they can break through their barriers as well. And I enjoy every conversation that I have with him. So definitely connect with him, jump in on Clubhouse and listen to him. Was it Fridays at 7 a.m.? 7 a.m., that's it, yep. Awesome. And it sounds like you're going to do some more Facebook lives as well. So I'm excited about that. Like more consistency with video. I always recommend that for everybody, of mm. course. So thank you again, Jeff, for just taking the time to just take that short time with me today. I appreciate you. You're so welcome. Back at you, Tamara. Thanks. Appreciate it. And those of you that are watching, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell and I'll see you next week.